Council may refer to the Commission. The Commission's goal shall be to support the City Council's efforts to realize its vision of Virginia Beach as a quality resort destination. So, having said that, first of all, everybody mute, please. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for their interest in attending today's meeting with Mayor Dyer. In order to make the best use of the meeting time, the RAC has provided Mayor Dyer guidance as to the topics that the Commission has suggested for discussion. All questions from the Mayor from non-commissioners will be addressed at the end of the meeting during public comments. So that's just for non-commissioners. Um, to avoid feedback, please keep your microphones muted and unmute only to speak and then mute your microphone when finished speaking. We request that commissioners use the raise hand button by your name in the participants window for questions and comments and participants do the same thing during the public comment period. Um, Robin and um, Kathy are co-hosting the meeting today. I will try to keep my eyes peeled on raised hands so that I'm calling on the appropriate person. But if, if I miss it, then they're going to call me back into order. So, um, and if you have trouble finding your virtual hand on the computer, it works to wave on the computer screen as well. We probably will notice you there. So we can go old school and new school. Um, Okay, uh, first thing on the agenda is to approve the minutes of December 3rd, 2020. You have those in your packets and they were sent to you um, ahead of time. Uh, if someone could, I'll entertain a motion for uh, the minutes. Michael Levinson moves for adoption. Thank you, Mike. Do I have a second? Mike Ronan for a second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Any uh, opposed? Thank you very much. The motion to approve the minutes is carried. Um, we have a very illustrious speaker today that we're all excited about. It's a good way to start the new year for sure. Um, we have Mayor Dyer here to talk to us about various and sundry objects that we uh, subjects that we um, have before us. So, Mayor, I'm going to turn it over to you. And then at the end of when you speak, uh, I'll open it up for questions from the commissioners. And um, then at the end of the meeting, if if there are any questions from the public, we will we will get those as well. Welcome. Hey, thank you all very much, and thank you for this opportunity. But once again, I'd like to start off by thanking all of you for your time, talent, and treasure that you put into, you know, just making you know, the beach area and tourism is such a vital part of our uh, economy and part of the DNA of Virginia Beach. And uh, let me just say that through adversity, sometimes we find opportunity. And I think we found out the value of the tourism industry, especially, you know, during our COVID challenge that we've been having. And I think it's a, there's a new awakening about the importance to make sure that you are viable and then you have the necessary resources and where the city can help is obviously going to be there going forward. Um, I, as a number of you know, I've been to the oceanfront a uh, number of times, and I think we could all agree that an Atlantic Avenue revitalization is going to be key. Uh, we're going to have to tackle the ongoing problems that have, you know, that, that are upon us. And I guess we got some new ones coming up. And um, but, you know, but that being said, I think by establishing an office that and having, you know, more, um, how shall I put it, linkage with the city in terms of what the problems are on the ongoing. I took a number of walking tours along the way. Uh, the deterioration on Atlantic Avenue, uh, you know, and once again, we got to talk about the homeless situation you know, going forward. And then once again, we, you know, I've already had a number of uh, preliminary discussions with the police chief, uh, you know, about making sure that anybody comes to visit our beach, whether it be working or owning a business or a visitor, 
feel safe. And that's going to be a priority going forward as we get ready for next year, which is hopefully going to be a lot better. I can't tell you how glad I am to be looking at 2020 in the rear view mirror. And I guess uh, we're still having some national strife going on. But I think when you think about things in retrospect before we get going, when we uh, were looking at meeting, uh, you know, the you know, confrontation with COVID, you know, back in uh, February, March and April, you know, things were looking pretty grim. But, you know, a couple things happened along the way. Uh, we were able to get uh, the patios open even before we got a you know, the beach opened up, and I think that was very, very helpful. At least it was a start. And then, uh, once again, kudos to uh, Ron Williams and Brian and, uh, you know, a wonderful management team that put together a plan where we actually got the beaches open by Memorial Day. I think that was, you know, something, it was kind of a Herculean effort that was done within a very, very short period of time. And I think another milestone that we had, actually a couple of them, yep, we did have some, um, um, you, know, uh, you know, racial justice um, demonstrations for 4th of July and uh, Labor Day, but I think they were handled, handled magnificently by the police. So, and uh, but then also getting uh, some of the tourism money from next year's budget move forward, you know, I, I'm, I'm glad to say I was the deciding vote on doing that. And uh, from what I understand from a number of folks in your respective organizations that really did help out to the point where uh, we found out just a couple of weeks ago that we had the highest uh, hotel occupancy over the summer in the country. Uh, and I, the other day I just gave a resolution to the East Coast Surfing Championship Somehow, some way, we were able to get it going, and now we got the world record 58 consecutive years. But once again, everything I say is a testament to the tenacity and resilience of the people of Virginia Beach, and especially out at the oceanfront when we were definitely confronted, you know, with some, you know, tough challenges going forward. And now we're at the point, what do we have to do? to make things better, to improve things. Now, I touched on a couple things where, you know, once again, I think that if we get back to a uh, situation, you know, things can be so positive now because I think in all honesty that we are in an era of transformation now. What's happened, you know, over the last couple months and times First of all, we got the Sports Center open, and that is going to be a year-round boon and plus, you know, not only for the hotels, the restaurants, and, and for the beach, you know, that going forward is going to be great. One way or the other, the convention, um, you know, Visitors Bureau, we're, that's going to be going through a transportation, uh, transformation soon. We just voted to bring it to uh, the General Assembly for the, uh, to allow for at least to facilitate a discussion on doing something. But once again, there's going to be an in-depth discussion on how we can do things better. Obviously, right now, you know, it's unacceptable, in my opinion. We have to make improvements and where how we get to those improvements. But the one good thing we got going for us, and this happened over the last couple of months, is that we have a city manager who has been uh, comes from a city where tourism is paramount, you know, to the uh, to the uh, to the economy. You know, whether, whether it be professional sports teams or you know hosting national conventions and things of that nature. Uh, we also have a police chief that is used to working and you know very very adept at community relations. So once again, I think, you know, the idea is we're going to do it. It's just a matter of how, uh, you know, perhaps we could just outsource it. it. You know, we, you know, certainly the, the discussion about an authority, but outsourcing and just finding ways that we can improve, you know, what goes on at the beach, how we market ourselves, how we bring things in, what we have to do to uh, bolster up our, you know, quite frankly, underperforming convention center that's out there. Um, also on the radar, we've had an unsolicited proposal 
uh, that came in, uh, one on the convention hotel and one from now from Rudy Loop. Once again, uh, we have some uh, financial problems, but we have to look ahead and play uh, chestnut checkers. And I think of, uh, once again, paramount importance to uh, the convention industry is the possibility of a convention hotel. And uh, both of these projects are going to be discussed at our upcoming retreat in February to figure out where they fit within a situation. But once again, I think we have to have a long-term plan and a short-term plan. Short-term plan is playing checkers. What can we do right now? But I think we also have to come up with a long-term strategy. And um, I was recently interviewed, uh, once again, our uh, new uh, wonderful city manager, Patrick Mahoney, um, you know, we're working on a, 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 I feel is a more beneficial strategic plan and vision for the city and the ocean front. And, you know, we have to, you know, factor in what can we do now and what should we be plotting to do down the future? When you take a look at what goes on with the Vibe District, my goodness, you go there and, you know, I just walk around in amazement just to see the wonderful character there. Uh, from what I understand, the dome site, the Atlantic Park project is, you know, uh, what, slowly but surely moving forward, removing some of the obstacles that are there. So, but once again, it, and there are more and more year round housing going on in the resort area. So my hope is that once that we start getting that year round business and more people start living there year round, a lot of the um, businesses and establishments that have been problematic, especially over the summer, will reconfigure to the new um, paradigm of customer. You know, hopefully, you know, you know the families go in there, but also, I think one thing, the success that we really had was something in the water a year ago. Regrettably, we had to cancel that and a number of other things. But it shows that if we give people constructive things to do, you know, youth can come there and people from families can come there. But once again, in that long term vision it is, you know, definitely going to be to promote that. And uh, the one thing is, I can say as mayor, I am committed, and I've spoken to a number of you over the times with the hotels, with the restaurants. You know, you have proven to be the valuable part of our DNA. And, or, you know, once again, and even as a city, to help pay for the bills, to pay for the infrastructure, we're making great strides with economic development. We have this uh, subsea cable that came in, we're looking at the fiber ring to bring in those business opportunities. And, uh, you know, we're talking to a gentleman now that wants to bring in 15 more cables. We're talking about bringing in significantly more businesses. And what that does is two things. It helps pay for the bills because once again, we as a city have the overall obligation and challenges with stormwater and transport public transportation you know we got to be you know work on those um things going forward too but the other thing is the things i've had, i have heard for the last uh 15 years now is that when our children graduate from uva hampton university odu there's no jobs for them here we have migration of our families going to northern virginia uh, D.C. and New York because they can't find jobs here. But once again, if we can capture that, that you know, that those millennials, those young folks, those young families that come here. And the other thing is to let people know. And, you know, my goodness, people sometimes take things for granted. We live in a tourist de destination where people spend a lot of money to come from all over the country and yes, all over the world to, to our great city. And look what we have here. So if, once again, if we can capture and then, you know, once again, with the sports center and the other things and some of the amenities that we got going at our oceanfront, and we can start getting the young families to come down, you know, of all different races and ages and, you know, just car capture that positivity that we had at something in the water where people came together. 
uh, you know, that's what we're going to do. But once again, it's going to take some time and it's going to take some effort and it's going to take commitment. It's going to take a nexus of the city working together with the stakeholders like yourself at the oceanfront to take a great city and take it to the next level. And to do that, to be that uh, city of diversity, inclusion, equality, and accessibility to people. And, you know, let me just close my remarks by saying this. We have been through much as a city together. You know, we've been through tragedies. We've been through uh, COVID. You know, we've been through civil unrest. We've been through uh, economic times when uh, things have been challenged. I understand that, you know, we were able to get some PPE money out to a number of folks, but we're still working through economic development to help the many uh, businesses that are struggling. We are a great city and we have, in spite of everything, have weathered the storm. It, you know, can't say it was great, but we're doing better than a lot of other folks in this country. And once again, that's due to the resilience and tenacity of the people that live here and work here. And let's just say that going forward, we're going to have a path to make for a brighter future and a brighter um, sense of purpose, you know, with the resort and, uh, you know, and, and throughout our great city. And at this point, I thank you for listening to my dire tribe, and I'll open it up for any questions or uh, comments. BJ, I can't hear you. Are you un unmuted? Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Sorry. I didn't even know I had muted myself. Um, I apologize. Uh, Mayor, I just wanted to say thank you for your support on the RAC resolution, because I think that that is a plan going forward this um, summer that could really make a, a very positive difference in, um, in our business and our customer experience going on there. I also wanted to thank you for your support on the vote last Tuesday um, regarding the CBB organ reorganization and the um, possibility of the authority as an option there. So we we um, we see your hard work in the background for our industry, and we just want you to know that we do we do appreciate it, even though sometimes we may not seem like it. We do appreciate it. Um, <laughs> So at that, um, are there any questions that someone would like to put forward to Mayor Dyer? So John Zirkle has his hand up. Okay. John, you're up. Thank you, Mayor Dyer. We appreciate you taking the time to speak with us. Um, my question is related to the CVB and the authority model. Uh, Councilmember Moss uh, mentioned that he was going to go directly to uh, state legislators, and uh, I think he may already have started. Is there a plan for the city to uh, help combat that, or is that going to be up to us uh, individual organizations? Well, you know, once again, uh, the whole concept is, you know, it, let me put it this way. It's got its positives and negatives. And ultimately, uh, you, know, we're, you know, being a Dillon rule state. But once again, I think we should use this to, you know, feed the conversation. And actually, instead of waiting for uh, the delegation to make up their minds, actually start having the, uh, the discussions. Ultimately, what has to be done is we have to improve the system. And but once again, we have to make sure that not, not only the public is educated, but the, the, the council is educated. Um, some of the heartburn um, that's out there right now is that they're talking about a director that may make upwards of four hundred thousand dollars plus a year and some other things. But once again, it's a matter of how we can justify that, what is going to be the cost benefit analysis, what's going to be the return on investment, how does this model uh, compare to maybe some other things that may produce um, similar things. There's still a lot of unknowns yet, but at least, you know, my thought was let's get it to the General Assembly because at, at worst it will provoke a 
uh, you know, a discussion. And, uh, you know, let's give everything. Once again, I think we want Virginia Beach to be known as a city of yes and a city of opportunity. And the way you create these opportunities to indul indulge in the engagement, figure out what the problem is, what caused it, and what could we do to fix it. BJ, you're John, do you have a follow-up? Okay. Um, I believe Councilman Tower had his hand up. Uh, thank you, BJ. I just was going to try to uh, respond with the mayor's help, perhaps more directly to Mr. Zirkel's question about what, what does the city do? Uh, we have a legislative agenda, and this... Uh, matter is now on our agenda and we have a legislative lobbying team that is responsible gets paid to promote our agenda with not just our local delegation which is important because if we don't have support from a local delegation for all the obvious reasons makes it a lot more difficult to get support across the uh, General Assembly. So I would hope, and the mayor can correct me if I'm wrong, that now that it is on our agenda, it will be lobbied and promoted with our delegation. We have a sponsor. I know, uh, I think Nancy Guy has already agreed to sponsor the bill, had a placeholder in place, and now knows that we're going, that we are going forward with it. So I hope that's a direct answer to you, John. Um, we will be doing it. Ha having said that, I think uh, individual support from individual members of the community are absolutely fine and you're entitled and should and exercise your right to contact your legislature and speak your mind as, as anybody else would. But there, But my understanding is that it's on our legislative agenda and our our lobbyists are instructed to do their very best to see that it gets passed. Hey, Mr. Tower, this is Ron Williams, and that's correct. The uh, our government relations uh, staff and our um, contracted lobbying consultant have already been working uh, together, and, we'll, and are reaching out to our professional business uh, organization partners as well to establish the strategies for uh, a successful passage. And I think the most important thing that we had was to at least get the votes to get it on uh, the agenda and get it on the legislative package, you know, to, you know, and this would really help facilitate the discussion going forward. But once again, I think it, uh, what I would want her to do was to demonstrate to the RAC that, you know, uh, that the committee that you all put forward and did hard work on was at least, it was recognized. And, uh, but once again, it's like uh, Ron said, you know, it is on the radar now in uh, Richmond and it's with any bill that comes up there. You know, I think when people resolve both individually and collectively as an organization, you know, that's where a lot of the weight comes. And that's where we think a lot of, uh, you know, uh, enabled legislation comes from. Uh, I'm, I'm concluded. Um, and next up is Randy Thompson. Yeah, I just, uh, if the RAC was so inclined to do so, would it be any benefit to have a letter of support from RAC to our delegation? Yeah, it obviously would not hurt. And, you know, once again, when we talk about, you, you know, getting things done, I think when uh, legislators hear from grassroots, you know, we put through a, a number of items on our legislative request list and, you know, some gets through, some doesn't. Uh, one of the things I would like to do going forward is to meet more uh, formally or informally with our delegation. You know, a lot of times you know, back when I first started, we had face to face meetings with them. Now we don't anymore. Um, I would like to, you know, we had a kind of a virtual one months ago, but it really wasn't well, uh, well attended. 
hopefully once uh, COVID is in the rear view mirror, that we could actually start meeting, engaging as a council, and maybe have, have some joint forums and things, and even meeting with the school board uh, more often than a couple times a year. You know, I think what we need going forward, and this is, I think, a perfect opportunity, is better articulation between the public and the elected officials, both on the state and local levels. And I think this could be a perfect example on, you know, what we can do uh, moving that forward. Okay, and, and I'm concluded on that. Um, Kathy, do we have any other hands up there? Okay. Um, all right. Uh, I did have one other comment to make to you, Mayor, and it doesn't have anything to do with tourism. Well, it does and it doesn't. Um, I was watching city council meeting on Tuesday and I were watched, I believe it was Chief Brazil with emergency services make his presentation on the assistance that we could provide in Virginia Beach and getting the vaccinations actually accomplished. Um, I, I think that most people in general have been a little bit alarmed about how slow the rollout is going on these. And I was very encouraged to hear that um, we were moving forward with plans such as what he had outlined um, to assist the health department in, in getting our residents in Virginia Beach vaccinated. And I just wanted to say, and I'm sure that the commission would agree with me on this, is that um, we are very supportive of anything that the city can do to assist in um, in making that a reality. Um, you know, it's we want to get this behind us, and part of that um, process comes with getting everybody vaccinated. So, if there is something as an industry that we can do to help, we're here for you. And BJ, I, uh, BJ, I truly appreciate those comments. As a matter of fact, right before I came here, I was uh, on the phone with our partners in Centera. Uh, we're looking into the possibilities of, you know, uh, maybe some assist then to get the distribution out there more effectively. And, you know, let me say one thing, um, you know, once again, I'm holding off from va vaccinations. I will be the last person in the city vaccinated. You know, we have so many people that are out there that contact the, the public. I, I think it's going to be paramount. But let me just, if I can be specific to, um, you know, the restaurant industry. And, you uh, yeah, as I and Ron knows, uh, you know, uh, Williams knows that, you know, when we were in uh, touch with the governor on opening the beaches, one of the things I cited uh, that, yes, we have to protect our vulnerable, you know, with this pandemic without question. And those are elderly folks and, you know, the folks in nursing homes and people with, uh, you know, certain medical conditions. But when you look at the collateral, consequences of the COVID-19, increases in depression, in suicide, alcohol use, drug abuse, domestic problems, and then also the fact that so many kids are home right now, um, you know, that they're not getting the socialization they need as part of their life education. And I've, I've done some PSAs, I've done some uh, news thing. Restaurants and tourism are one of the best outlets that we could have. You know, when people can walk on our beaches and boardwalk and get out and exercise, it's not only good for their health, it's good for their mental health. And one of the things I keep on pushing, you know, you know the heroes that have been out there, uh, you know, still working in the restaurants to get food out. And I've been, you know, I tell folks, if you, you know, restaurants have always been, traditionally very sanitized and safe places to go. And I haven't been to a restaurant yet where I haven't seen, you know, the spacing and, you know, but people sitting back and enjoying themselves, but also take out and you know, support the restaurants with takeout and, uh, you know, pick up. And, you know, through this, we can get together. And the vaccinations, BJ, you're a hundred percent right are going to be very, very important going forward. 
we you know we have to accomplish a lot and i think we have to set a time goal because we want to be open and ready for the summer you know what i'm really hoping with the vaccinations coming and everything yeah by the time we get to a couple weeks before memorial day because hey listen you you need time to get your supplies chain uh going and you know to get certain things done you know that when we are ready to go we have to be ready to go and the city right now is going to be looking at ways of partnering whether it be the vaccines or just helping people in your respective industries. Yeah, I think I can, I, I feel confident making that commitment. Right. And I'll close. Thank you. Um, I, you know, I, that is certainly of great importance to all of us. Um, I understand that you are going to probably leave our meeting because you've got another one to go to. And I know that I had originally stated that any questions from non-commissioners would be held until the end of the meeting and i'm going to deviate just for um just for the, your particular presentation and open it up to non-commissioners um so that we're not holding you up um are there any any questions from individuals that are not commissioners for mayor dyer okay all right um, Mayor Dyer, thank you again. We really appreciate what you do for us. And I tell you, what, I can't tell you how, my, how much I appreciate all of you. And I want you to feel comfortable that you know I would be glad to come back to your meetings at any time. I'm also uh, more than willing to meet with you in small groups or individually. You know, once again, this mayor's office is open, and uh, your city is open, and. You got to remember that you know we're going to beat this thing as we, uh, as a collective, and uh, you play a very big part in you know providing much needed relief and comfort to individual uh, families and individuals. And for that, I say thank you. God bless you. Happy New Year, and uh, nothing but health and prosperity for all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right, we have um, the chairman's report coming up next, and um, I just wanted to remind all of the commission members that your annual financial disclosure forms are due. I know that Terry had, I received mine via email, but some were sent out via regular mail as well, but please make sure that um, that you get those back in. And if there are any questions, you can contact Terry directly. And um, Robin has those phone numbers and emails as well there. Um, I would like to, um, I'd like to welcome John Zirkle to the commission as a representative for the hotel industry. Um, this is John's first official meeting, although he's been sitting out there a lot in the past. Um, so welcome, John. We are very excited to have you here. Um, I also need to uh, amend my ways from last meeting is that I did not recognize that it was Laura's last meeting, um, that she has come off of the commission, um, and I can't even begin to say all of the work that she has done with her Green Committee and the participation in RAC overall. So, Laura, I, I, I know that I will say this to you personally, but now in a public forum, um, thank you for everything done. Um, for RAC and for the Green Committee there. I also would like to state that both Billy Allman and Randy Thompson were um, extended for a three-year term there. Um, welcome back, gentlemen. I'm not sure whether that's a punishment to you or a privilege, but we're glad to have you back. <laughs> um, I think that you picked up with Mayor Dyer that on Tuesday we did receive a positive vote on the authority going forward to um, to Richmond. I'm sure that we'll be getting out more information to you um, shortly on that as well. So we are going to move into committee reports at this point. Um, and Chuck, we are um, getting a report from you for TPPC, and I believe either you or Kathy are also going to update us on ramp. Yes, yeah. Kathy, Kathy will take care of the ramp, okay? 
Okay. Okay, well, thank you. Um, the transportation, parking, uh, and pedestrian committee met on Thursday, December 17th, uh, prior to the joint meeting with the ramp committee. Rick Lohman, uh, city traffic engineer, presented accident data for the 16th Street uh, Pacific Avenue intersection. And to address the express concerns of some of the committee members, he offered proposing signing and pavement marking modifications that would allow right turns only from the 16th Street westbound direction. Uh, Councilman Tower was to discuss these modifications with the nearby condo residents. Uh, these modifications could be completed by the end of March. Uh, a, and then a brief presentation was also made on the Pacific Avenue uh, pedestrian improvements between uh, 10th and 39th Street. Um, this was a pretty brief meeting. There was no other items discussed. And so um, I'd like to turn it over. I've asked Kathy Warren to kind of provide an update on the ramp committee uh, activities. Okay, Kathy, before you start, could I make one comment on that? And I apologize that I did not make this comment to you, Chuck, before sure. your meeting. Um, I was, I went to 16th Street the other day because I wanted to kind of see with my own eyes the layout of what was happening there. And yes, I was eastward bound on 16th, getting ready to turn right on Pacific Avenue. And I did note that there were some bushes between 16th Street going up towards 17th Street that really did impede the view a little bit. I had to get the nose out in my car a little bit out into um, Pacific Avenue. So if you could pass on to the appropriate people that there are plants there that need to be. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll get with Rick Lohman and we'll okay. see. But I suspect that's something the public works would look at, but yeah, okay. sure. Thank you so much. Okay, so on to the resort area mobility plan. We last met December 17th before Christmas. Our next meeting is scheduled for January 28th. If you recall, we've scheduled a monthly meeting for the ramp uh, sessions, but we also put a placeholder in there every other two weeks. Because we are waiting for information to come in from the survey, the public survey that will launch next week and remain open for three weeks, we felt it was better to have the next meeting January 28th so that we'll have a lot more to talk about, quite frankly. But we will be presenting at that meeting preliminary bicycle and pedestrian network plan, a preliminary trolley and transit network plan, a recommendation or at least a couple of recommendations for uh, Atlantic Avenue, and then potential pilot projects that can be accomplished in the 2021 season, which we're really excited about. Okay, and I know I've been sitting in on those meetings and there's a lot of work that has gone in on this. And I can say out of all of the big topics that I have participated in in the last 30 years, this is one of the most complicated that I have seen. So thank you city staff for what you guys are doing because this, is, this puts new meaning to um, the saying, it's like herding cats. Um, these cats are rabid and on steroids. So uh, <laughs> my hat's off to you for coordinating all of that. Um, Billy, you are up with planning and design review. I'm sorry, I can't hear you, Billy. I know. Oh, you wait a minute, you just came through. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right, um, technologically challenged. So yes, PDRC met on Tuesday morning. Um, we reviewed two projects. First was an application for alternative compliance in the Oceanfront Resort District form-based code for the shaft on Atlantic Avenue. Um, a really striking plan to improve that outdoor venue that Mike Standing has. Um, it is uh, pretty remarkable uh, what they're going to hopefully do there. We reviewed it just in terms of complying or non-complying or what they call alternative compliance with the ordinance. They will be coming back to us with additional design 
but it, it does put a perimeter around that outdoor area and actually adds a second level around the perimeter um, and creates more outdoor uh, opportunity for dining and, and recreation. Uh, additionally, we um, had a short presentation on the canopy at Mahima's Outdoor Cafe on the east side of the hotel there. It was a uh, more of a fixed cover system, a hard cover system uh, that they wanted to put in because of weather. And that is in compliance with the current or new cafe ordinances. And so it's very attractive and we reviewed and approved that. Uh, lastly, just to keep folks up to date on the um, ongoing cafe ordinances, um, the new cafe at um, 27th and Atlantic is Oscar's Oceanfront Boardwalk Cafe. That's going to be going to City Council on January the 19th for their first year approval for their first franchise agreement. We reviewed that cafe a bit ago. Um, we met and complied with everything. This is the cafe that Bob Hughes runs um, with Chris Harvey and Amara Hoffman being the applicant. So that would be going to council on the, on the 19th. So that was our meeting. Any questions? Thank you. Okay. Um, next, we have OEC. Uh, Randy? Yeah, OEC did not meet this month. Okay, well, that was a really short report there. Yep. Um, uh, we have Rick uh, first, and I'm going to um, ask Randy if he can kind of give us an update on that because I was not able to at attend the meeting yesterday. Um, so, if you could just highlight what the discussions were. Yesterday, and it was um, the primary discussion was on restrooms in the resort which uh, Emily Archer gave us a, a presentation, which was the same, I believe the same presentation we'd seen before. So it was another update of this, um, what the plans and the, and the status is. Um, this has been an ongoing, and it's, it's in the CIP now in, in an approved uh, um, initiative. And in doing so, and be given that it's part of the uh, race app and uh, very strong point coming through from our surveys. Uh, there was a motion coming out of Rick to take this to the full rack to, to move that we move this forward. Right. And if you like it, if now's the time for the motion, I can yes. put that out there formally. So the motion is to maintain the city's current schedule and CIP and moving forward with the design and plans for a restroom facility in the Central Beach area of the resort at 20th Street, 20th Street with additional future locations to be considered on the west side of Atlantic Avenue. Okay, um, there's a motion made. Do I have a second on this motion? Second. Okay, I've got two seconds. Robin, we can either have Christina or Billy. Um, the motion has been made to um, move ahead on the restrooms. Is there any discussion? Kathy, do you see any hands? Yes. Okay. Um, then I will move to um, call this to a vote. I'm sorry, I was getting some feedback there. All in favor? Aye. Raise your hands. Aye, aye, aye. Or raise hands. Okay. Um, any opposed? Were there any, I didn't see anybody raise their hand. So am I okay there? Okay, so the motion was approved. Um, thank you, Randy, thank you for filling in and thank you for updating us on, on that topic. Um, the only other thing that I wanted to add to that guys was uh, we have a couple of um, speakers coming up, hopefully. Um, we have invited, um, hopefully to get an update on the CBB restructuring. Um, it may be too soon, so that we'll play that one by ear. Um, we also, for RAC, are considering for the next meeting, um, our city manager, if he is available, or Rita McClenney, um, which is with the state organization, or 
um, block by block, which is the proposed contractor that will be part of the the resort programs office there. So that's what we sort of have on the agenda. Um, and looking out future, we have had Rick has met with the police chief, but probably getting closer to the season. Um, maybe we can get Shannon and the police chief in as um, as we proceed into the season there. So next we have Osgat Christina. Yes, hello everyone today. Um, so yesterday we continued our meeting. Um, we spoke with another large landowner in the Central Beach District um, and uh, wanted to get her feedback on, on all things related to that area. And um, I would say that her biggest uh, point she wanted to get across was to encourage uh, no development on the stub streets uh, to preserve some of that uh, open space that we're fortunate to have in Virginia Beach, unlike, you know, uh, like a Myrtle Beach or something like that. Um, and I was happy to hear she also commented that uh, she does serve on some of the committees, the ramp committee and things like that, but she was very happy to hear or with the work that's being done um, on all those committees, specifically the ramp committee um, and uh, plans for Atlantic Avenue. And she seemed to think that a lot of things will fall into place after that has been completed, uh, much like Mayor uh, Dyer just said earlier. Um, so that was that was our meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and the, our last committee meeting uh, report would be green. And um, I am going to um, basically give you an update next month on what's happening with green and who the new chairperson for um, that committee will be there. So there's no, no report. Um, next, we have the staff report. And I know, Brian, that you are going to give us a heads up. Um, but I also um, wanted to have the opportunity for Mr. Williams, if he wanted to make any comments to to chime in here or just to continue sitting there in the background. <laughs> um, no, that's my office. Uh, um, yeah, I know Brian's got the football. So, um, yeah, okay. we've got a lot of work going on behind the scenes, but he, he's ready to give you a good update. Perfect. Thank you. Brian, you're up. Can't hear you. Brian, are you there? Robin, can you unmute him or? That's what we're trying to do. Uh oh, he just gave somebody the this is not good. All right, I should I should there be good go. now. I got yes. I got I got muffled. <laughs> so uh, I definitely was unmuted on my end. But in any case, uh, thanks again for um, for having me. Um, wanted to give you an update on several aspects of the resort management initiative that um, the RAC. Uh, initiated and that council approved uh, in kind of two parts on September 1st and uh, December 1st. So um, first, the core of the resort management office is to transfer roughly eight staff from the Convention and Visitors Bureau, um, the special events and resort programming staff. And we're right in the middle of doing that. They're pretty much moved over to create this new uh, city office. I really want to thank uh, Nancy Hellman and um, and her team have been really and Tiffany have been really really helpful in that transition. Um, just fundamental things. We want to make sure that um, the folks nothing meets the beats with regard to payroll and with regard to you know just organizationally being set up in the city separately. Um, but it also includes a resort administrator and administrative type of person to uh, run the office to do the financial transactions. Um, so those, those um, employees or those positions are in place. Um, they're, they're vacant, but they're in place. And then housing and neighborhood preservation will have two community outreach specialists for homelessness outreach. 
uh, a code enforcement uh, inspector and a zoning inspector. And um, I've met with um, the directors, both Andy and Bobby Tahan, um, the acting public works director, Philip Cutter, and uh, Chief Newtigate several times to um, outline uh, expectations between ourselves about um, enhanced coordination. And then um, we're gonna start the hiring process. So my first order of business will be to, um, and I'm finalizing the position descriptions with uh, human resources right now is to hire the administrative person to run the books, order supplies, uh, that type of thing. And parallel with that, there are two other things going on. Um, we've identified and are in the process of getting, assuming a lease on the field office, which is 401 for Jim Beach Boulevard. I call it basically the southwest corner of Arctic Avenue and 17th Street. Met with Billy Allman out there uh, earlier today uh, to show him some uh, options for, you know, design studio space to, to work with um, SGA, SGA office um, uh, subject matter experts and or PDRC uh, pro bono volunteer uh, folks for anybody looking to enhance their facade or other aspects of their uh, business front in the resort area. Uh, I think he was pleased with with the options that are that are going on there. Um, Public Works will be, after they take care of some things going on at the Municipal Center, unfortunately we had the power cut there and Ron Williams is in a, in, a, in a city hall without any heat right now, for example, but as soon as they're done with that emergency, they'll be working on building out that space. Nothing fancy, but just some fresh paint, new carpet, making it presentable to the public. Um, and the third aspect of that space is I'm integrating in uh, the resort ambassadors block by block, um, finalizing the contract with them. Um, the city manager has approved for them to be the pilot um, uh, company to work with. They'll actually be housed in that same space, sharing the garage and, and one very small office with them, kind of shoehorning everybody in there while still trying to be compliant, uh, knowing that for the foreseeable future this year, we'll be dealing with pandemic type of um, protocol, so we're trying to balance that out. So two things, organizationally, we're in good place with um, um, following through on council's direction with having the right staff and um, the positions in place anyway. Um, a field office is in uh, well in motion. Uh, the resort ambassador services are, the contract is approved. We're just um, fine tuning the language and executing it with block by block. And then the fourth, aspect that I'm going to uh, speak to today is entertainment services. I want to thank uh, several of you that were involved in a entertainment task force that Mr. Williams uh, stood up to try to provide us some guidance on an enhanced program for 2021. I, I think everybody will be uh, pleased on that. Perhaps, you know, that could be a, an agenda item in the near future as well to outline uh, what that is, but essentially it it uh, extends the nightly entertainment and live on Atlantic um, program significantly back into the shoulder season and provides a number of other um, opportunities um, for, as an example, bringing back stars in the park, you know, major artists uh, to be featured in the, the three um, oceanfront parks and a number of other new uh, programs and adjustments to existing ones. Um, we also, uh, through the communications office, Julie Hill, we uh, facilitated an online survey, which hopefully all of you participated in, that provided some some insights. Um, uh, nothing too new, but but we wanted to make an effort to make sure we reached. Um, our residents and to make sure that they felt engaged and that the uh, the resort is for them as well as is this entertainment. So uh, we also uh, went through that process. Um, what I can speak to in at a at an upcoming meeting is what we're going to be doing with um, code and zoning enforcement education before there's kind of a any bigger push on enforcement. Um, and, and the program will be put together on that. So if there's any RAC committee or the RAC itself that you'd like for us to get 
appropriate staff at to talk about what um, give a refresher on the things we'd be, we'll be prioritizing for code and zoning enforcement. We're open to, to doing that. Um, lastly, and, and then, you know, I'll, I'll let um, Bobby Malati can speak to this as well. Um, Holiday Lights was a um, success. We thought it would be because of the pandemic environment and being a, a relatively pandemic safe um, event. We had to make some adjustments with ticketing because it was, the, it was so popular and the traffic impacts, but um, overall, there was roughly a um, 35 to 40% increase in the number of vehicles that were um, realized and, and, and nearly 50% increase in tickets and nearly three times as much revenue. And Bobby's welcome to um, speak to those numbers a little bit more because the ones I just spoke from were from December 28th and it went all the way through January 3rd. I want to give kudos to Mike uh, Eason because this program really kind of builds off of um, the enhancements that he had started to work on and the um, the capital improvements of um, maintaining some of the existing equipment and then and then we, we we took that to the to the next phase that he had set in motion and that was to provide us uh, some enhancements uh, this year as well as furthering the what he had already set in motion so. That's all I have for now, but I'm happy to stand by for any questions. Thank you, Brian. Um, Bobby, would you like to add anything on holiday lights? Okay. Um, okay. So that was the staff report. Uh, I, I'm sorry. Councilman Tower has his hand oh, up. I'm sorry. Okay. Thanks. Uh, that's, that's all right. Thank, thank you, Kathy. Thank you, BJ. Brian, I just had a question. I got an email from uh, a lady who I know is a been a dedicated volunteer in various things around the city, and she is particularly interested. In, she said oh, she was very interested in the new resort office and wondered whether there was an opportunity for people from the neighborhoods adjoining the resort area who feel very invested in the in, in what you're doing to be a part of the process, a volunteer on a completely on a volunteer basis. So uh, I, I'm just planting that seed really. I think it sounds like a good idea to me if you can manage it. I, I, I don't know that you need somebody there permanently, but. I think having good relationships with neighborhoods always a good idea. And if you get the right people in there, I think you could get some extraordinary value out of volunteers as well. I, I totally agree, uh, council member um, tower. Um, I think if you, if you put me in contact with her, we have a conversation about, um, okay, about her skill set, And I'm also working with uh, Nancy staff on how the visitor information center and the kiosks that are at the resort will work and, and how for consistency sake, how, how we complement each other and in our interaction with our visitors and our residents that are down in the resort area. And perhaps that's an opportunity, you know, to, to work in one of those kiosks um, um, at, with regard to, you know, visitor information, providing um, concierge type services, uh, directions, and the like. So if you put me in contact with her, I'm happy to have that conversation for sure. Thank you. Will do. And Brian, you had touched on one of the items um, that I think is really critical to everything that we're doing right now, and that's the communication aspect. Um, and I would love to see um, at future RAC meetings when it's appropriate. Um, you know, everything from updates on what we're doing from a compliance perspective. Um, what we are doing from an entertainment perspective, what we're doing from, um, you know, the block by block. Uh, I think that we need to work together with all of the organizations within the community on, on getting the information out there. I, th I think that that will play into the success of it. So, and I know that you've already started a lot of that, but if we can, um, RAC can certainly be a, a clearinghouse for getting that information out. Um, 
We're excited about everything that you're doing, and I can't imagine having a better person to start up this office. So thank you. Thank you for the comments. And we, we did had a pretty uh, robust meeting on communications earlier. Hopefully everybody received my email, uh, my initial email update, and I don't like blind copying emails out. So I want to protect folks' privacy and their, their emails. So we are working on um, what that one one mechanism the e-newsletter format and how folks can subscribe to it in the easy way and then i'll, I'll work um through kathy and you bj on um how we're able to test that out through through the rack um and and making sure we have the right vehicle for that that particular mode of communication great so okay got it yes ma'am thank you thank you um yep. okay kathy am i missing any other hands george Caterides. George? Yeah, hey Brian, how you doing? Um, just wanted to ask you a quick question about the facade grant and capital improvement grant that we've been working on. Is there any, where do you have like a target date of when that's gonna be available for people? As we get closer to the spring, it's gonna be kind of more important to get that available so people can do uh, you know, their improvements if they're able to. So George, uh, this is Ron Williams. That, that's administered through the Virginia Beach Development Authority. And they should be uh, releasing um, guidelines on that in the in the next uh, couple of weeks. I think uh, one one key thing was to make sure that a, a, an association like uh, the Atlantic Avenue Association, for example, make sure that they've kind of gotten some of the basics that I think Kathy might have shared with y'all for what we're looking for. For you need uh, a partner organization uh, that represents the vision and goals of a district uh, like Atlantic Avenue. Um, basically building on the, the model that we had with the Vibe District that had a common vision and goals and what and what the, the uh, approved activities were. We just need a, a, an association to basically raise their hand and say, yeah, we want to be one of those, but then any of the properties within that area uh, can make sure that we've got a representation of the association on the review committee. And uh, again, trying to establish what, what what's the goal of, of the improvements that are going in, not just the individual property, but What's the overarching kind of goal of the district? So uh, we really need that that homework to be done by a partner organization, um, and then any any applicant um, to the Virginia Beach Development Authority uh, can be considered. Um, the Vibe District was one of those we built on the success of that with the three years of funding that we had running through the Development Authority for them, um, and then we've got some other districts across the city that are that are likely eligible too. It'll eventually e probably evolve as as to another component a part of our uh, economic development investment program, the EVIP program. But right now it's uh, it's earmarked there and um, they should be rolling that out in the next few weeks. Hey, thank, thanks, Ron. Uh, you know, we're all in on what you just said and we're ready to partner. Uh, I believe Kathy has uh, been working with us on some of that. So if we have any more work to do, please let us know. Um, on, on my end, George, we'll be providing that, that space or, you know, we're, uh, the offices will be more operational, so that's more of a economic development piece, but but we're here to help facilitate it and providing the space, the interaction with designers um, right there in the field, you know, two blocks off. Um, and so, that, so that's kind of our role, but I'm going to educate myself about the program even more, though, so that um, at any opportunity we can make, whether it be a resort ambassador or me, making folks aware of the program as it evolves. Right. Um, Billy, is your group ready to stand up and go into um, because you're going to be a vital part of this? Yes, I mean, I've got people that have been asking to do this for a while. OK, um, can you map out because people are going to I mean, I see this as kind of a multi. Step process um, with you guys being on the front end of it. Um, as far as coming up with some design so that they can even apply for these grants. Um, I think that we need to um, maybe between you and Brian, if you can uh, map out what the process is so that we can start getting the word out there, because the design process need, we need to go ahead and get that underway um, so that when the grants come out, people are ready. Yeah, I mean, I can get with Brian. I mean, it's 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 fairly simple, quite honestly. It's 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 calling and I would think setting up a meeting with Brian. He can let me know and I'll get people that need to go look at the property. 
and then that's where it starts and then take a look at what they have and can't don't have and then kind of go from there but um it's just um trying to offer some level of design assistance usually it's an initial meeting at the property um, right. at the storefront or the shop or or the whether it's the tenant or the landowner and look at what the opportunities are and then you know see if we can get some help uh, volunteer help to do a sketch or take a photograph and annotate the photograph or do something to be able to provide that exhibit that would be needed to apply for the grant. Right. Okay. So I'll Ron, reach out to the folks I know that are interested in volunteering. Okay. Ron, does that make sense to you? Yes. Um, I, th it, th I think that's a good, um, you know, compliment and uh, service to have. Um, you know, our, our SGA staff has, has been doing that with with the VI grant program, um, but it'll be nice to have another cadre of people. Um, you know, the, what's required for the application, uh, you know, is pretty rudimentary. And what Billy said is exactly all, all you need is a, a sketch and, and or a, an image that's been doctored, you know, to, to show what the, the current and future uh, item would look like. Um, I should have said too that so so there's a hundred thousand dollars that's uh, that's been earmarked. Um, that was you know that's that's there will be another iteration next year in, in the budget for that. Uh, it's up to ten thousand uh, dollars is what we did previously, and it's a it's a dollar for dollar match up to ten, and it's on a reimbursable basis. Um, the type the types of things that that were done in the buy grants were uh, included. You know some some storefronts, some new windows, doors. Um, some paint, some landscaping. Um, it could be used on interior to improve uh, kitchen equipment, things of that nature. Um, the, the, the real intent is that there is a capital improvement uh, to a property, regardless of what the business is. And so, um, so the landlord actually has to be a part of the of the application process as well. Um, so, whatever capital improvements there obviously has a lasting impact uh, versus a, an operational expense, for example. Um, so. So that's that's where we've opened it up to you know it can be modified for district of, of a focus for example and you know the vibe district for example one of the things that were vibrant that added to the flavor and the culture of of the district and, and it was measured um on that on that regard for example you know some equipment was considered before but it was like well is that really advancing the the district as a whole and the vision as a whole so that that's how they're uh, reviewed um and uh will continue to evolve it uh as uh, as we get more engagement and more participation in it. Okay, yeah, I didn't realize that you could use it for stuff inside. I mean, I would think that our objective is really on facade improvement, but okay. Okay, all right, any other um, comments, guys? Old business, new business? Am I missing any hands, Kathy? Okay, everybody have a uh, great month. Happy New Year. See you in February. All right. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.